Davis, and he will tell us about the composite Higgs. Okay, uh, I'd like to thank so much for inviting me in the last minute. <laughs> so you have to hear one more talk. Uh, now I'll just uh, give some uh, uh, discussion on the implication of 125 GB Higgs boson on some composite Higgs model. Uh, we know that uh, the discovery of the Higgs boson completes the standard model. Now we know its mass is about 125 GeV, so we know all the parameters in the Higgs potential. Now the uh, mass square term and the quartic couplings are all determined by the uh, vacuum expectation value and the Higgs boson mass. In particular, Higgs, when the vacuum expectation value is fixed, the Higgs boson mass is just related to the quartic coupling. We know the quartic coupling now is, uh, is quite small, so it's, uh, uh, it's perturbative. Now this, uh, this quadratic term, the mass square term is related, uh, is a received quadratic uh, divergent contribution from any, uh, from quantum correction, so it's uh, sensitive to new physics at time scale. Uh, uh, this is associated with the hierarchy problem. Now the naturalness will uh, suggest that uh, the new physics should be near the weak scale to, to cut off this uh, quadratic divergence in order for, uh, uh, so that we don't have uh, excess fine tuning. On the other hand, quartic coupling only runs logarithmically, so once we measure it, well, if we assume there's new physics nearby, the coupling is roughly that, that size, this tells us something about this uh, uh, if this new physics is responsible for generating the Higgs potential, this quartic coupling will tell us about the, uh, the, 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 the new physics, uh, uh, give some constraint on this new physics. In fact, uh, uh, in some models, it may, this requirement of this quartic coupling may even, have, uh, may even have some tension with the natural requirement. One example is the well-known MSSM, the minimum supersymmetric standard model. You know, in supersymmetry, a supersymmetry solves the hierarchy problem if the superpartners are close to the weak scale. In particular, the top, the superpartner of the top core, because it has the largest contribution to the Higgs mass term. Now, on the other hand, if we assume the minimum supersymmetric standard model, we know that the quartic term, uh, quartic coupling comes from the electrical gauge coupling. So we know how the size at the tree level. This implies a relation at the tree level that the, the Higgs boson mass is less than Z boson mass, which is obviously uh, uh, wrong. So that we have to increase the Higgs boson mass through the radiative correction. Now, in order to do that, we need a large correction from the top and stop loop. Now this all, because this uh, you need to increase from 90 GV to 125, it requires a very large contribution. And typically it will require a very heavy stop. Like uh, in this, uh, this figure, unless the, some uh, left-right mixing, this A term is quite big, otherwise you need a very heavy uh, stop in order to produce 125 GV Higgs. So this is, is in some part, in some part uh, in a little bit of intention with the, this uh, uh, naturalness requirement, at least in this uh, in this model, for example, this uh, is an interesting implication in the uh, in supersymmetric scenario. However, here I will just talk about the composite Higgs model. So I will just discuss this implication in a, in a couple of examples of composite Higgs. Now, first, uh, a composite Higgs usually arises from some strong dynamics. So as uh, so the you have the very strong dynamics and the naive expectation is that all the couplings are big. Uh, so so uh, most naive expectation is that in composite Higgs model, Higgs boson should be heavy. This is uh, already in conflict with what we found in fact the Higgs boson is quite light. Now the only way out, uh, we know naturally way out is uh, uh, if the light Higgs boson comes from the pseudo, uh, it's a, come from the, some broken global, uh, spontaneous broken global symmetry so that they are pseudo nambu Gosson bosons. Now this idea come, uh, goes back to Kepler and Georgia in, in 84. Now, uh, now this uh, global symmetry is broken at some scale, F, through by the strong dynamics. Now we want, uh, what we want is this F is not completely aligned with the electrically preserving vector. 
instead it tilted a little bit so that it has a small component V which breaks the electric weak symmetry. So to do that, it generically it requires a fine, some tuning of all the V square over F square. So this means that the F, we don't want F to be much bigger than V, otherwise we require a tuning to this order. This is the corresponding re, uh, natural requirement in composite state model, it's like the, uh, uh, the, the super symmetry, the super patterns here. Uh, the F sort of plays that role in composite state model. Now, the common uh, symmetry group uh, in, uh, discussed in composite Higgs model are, are uh, listed. Uh, there are, here are some uh, common symmetry uh, groups. The first, uh, the simplest one is that SU3 mod, uh, broken down to SU2. Uh, that is assuming the global, uh, global symmetry SU3, then it's spontaneous broken down to SU2. It will produce uh, five Goldstone bosons. In particular, four of them form a doublet under SU2. This is the, uh, one of the simplest choice. And, uh, however, th this choice uh, uh, doesn't have a custodial SU2 symmetry. Therefore, there is strong constraint from the weak idle, weak idle spin violation constraint. So in, in general, in this type of uh, symmetry group, uh, uh, you need the, the symmetry breaking scale F to be quite high in order to avoid this constraint. This means you need some more uh, tuning in this model. The smallest group that contains a group uh, custodial SO2 symmetry is the SO5 uh, broken down to SO4. In this case, you have two copies of SU2 which can be used to, put, to protect the uh, weak idle spin. Then, uh, in this, uh, in this uh, symmetry group, you, there's uh, another constraint one has to worry about is the C2BB bar constraint. And in standard model, it's also uh, measured very well. So, in this case, uh, in fact, it's uh, it's uh, it's uh, not the most naive uh, uh, assignment. Instead of assigning a uh, left-handed top, bottom, right to two-one representation, instead you want to assign them to two-two representation of SU two left cross SU two as pointed by Agassi and out in, in this paper. So and uh, there are many other choices, but usually the other choice are basically larger groups which contains. Uh, these groups, so I will just use these two basic ones as a discussion. Now, another challenge in composite Higgs models is the uh, uh, top, top quark mass. The top quark uh, is very heavy in, in for composite Higgs model. In general, if you uh, think about the, because the Higgs is non-elementary, <coughs> if you think that Higgs is a fermion bilinear, then if you try to write down your car coupling, it will be higher dimensional operator. And in general, you expect this uh, coupling would be small, which is good for the light fermion, but for top quark, uh, it's, uh, in general, it's too small. So usually, you need some, some mechanism to expand the top quark. That is, the top quark should at least partially participate in the strong dynamics, either uh, in, uh, uh, just directly participate in a uh, strong dynamic or has a large mixing with the strong dynamic. So these are the two uh, uh, ideas which uh, try to produce a, a very large top fork mass. One is partial compactness uh, proposed by Kaplan uh, in 91. This is a, they assume that the strong dynamics has some composite operator which has the same quantum number as the top fork and then it mixed with the, uh, uh, some elementary top quark. So the real top quark is a mixture of these two. So it's, a, it's partially composite. In this type of model, this also means this composite operator will produce a, a tower of heavy type top-like uh, resonance. And the other way is just that the top quark itself uh, has some new strong uh, uh, attractive force. Therefore, they form some bound state directly. The Higgs is the bound state of the top quark. That's the top Condensation for both my Nambu and the Nuraski had all in 89. Now, in these models, uh, the top quark set sector provides the largest explicit symmetry breaking, which generates the Higgs potential. Therefore, in order to produce a 125 ZeV Higgs, this means that uh, this puts some constraint on, the, on, the, on this top sector in order to, to get the right quark mass. So we will just see some, some consequences. 
So we will just discuss uh, basically two classes of models. The first one is the uh, so holographic composite Higgs model uh, proposed uh, by Agassi, Alcantino, and Pomeroy, and also many others uh, who did the uh, following works. Now the assumption is that uh, there are some strong dynamic sectors. Now this strong dynamic sector is assumed to preserve uh, the exact global symmetry, some uh, exact, exactly uh, symmetric, but it's spontaneously broken by the strong dynamic at some scale f. That's now, therefore, it produced some uh, nambu boson bosons, which are, at this point, is a massless. They are identified as the Higgs field. However, of course, we know Higgs uh, is not massless, so we need some explicit breaking term. The explicit breaking term comes from the coupling of the strong dynamic sector to the standard model gauge boson and the fermions. These are assumed to be elementary. They don't form a complete mass field of the global symmetry, so when they couple to the strong dynamic, it's obvious because they they don't form complete mass, they break this global symmetry. Therefore, they generate uh, some trivial potential. Now, Higgs potential will arise from loops of these couplings. The largest contribution is coming from the largest mixing, largest coupling, which is from the top factors. Now, this contribution to the Higgs potential are finite and calculable if uh, we assume that the two-point function uh, satisfy the one word sum rule, which is analogous one in the QCD. And in this way, the typical have, have this form. This is potential, they generate some qu quadratic term and some quadratic term taking this form. The cutoff will be play, uh, uh, the cutoff will be the some resonance in the in these uh, composite operators. Now the largest contribution when you replace this uh, standard uh, model uh, coupling so as like nc times the yt square, right? the top you count coupling square. Now to get the correct Higgs web, one needs this v square to be a over b over f square to be this value. This tells you a must be much smaller than b in order to get the, the correct electrically symmetry breaking. Uh, this usually requires some tuning to make a much smaller than b. That's uh, uh, already one of avoidable tuning there. And also, the Higgs boson mass is related to this factor. In fact, it relates to lambda square over f square. This is the, some, will be some resonance mass. In fact, one can see this uh, in a diff another way, is that uh, the quartic coupling can be generated by this type of loop. Now, these are the Higgs field coming in, and uh, these are the standard model top quark left and right. These are some Composite operator, the resonances, uh, top like resonances. They form a loop, they generate the uh, co quartic coupling of this type. These are the coupling between the, the standard model top and the, the, these composite operators. On the other hand, the top you call coupling come from, comes from the mixing term through this uh, uh, the, this resonance, heavy resonance. So they, they are roughly given by this, uh, this formula. So you plug in, you you, you replace this by the top you car coupling, you find that the Higgs boson mass is related to the top quark mass in this way. Top quark mass square and the Higgs boson mass are uh, uh, strongly correlated. And this is the order one factor. And in addition, there's MQ square over F square. MQ is the basically the resonance mass. That's, we know that the Higgs mass is in fact a uh, little bit smaller than the top work mass. This implies that the MQ cannot be too big. Has to be about comparable to F to the symmetry breaking scale. In fact, this is just a rough estimate. In uh, people, the detail relation depends on the fermion representation. People have done just choose. They choose different representation. They calculate the the, uh, the Higgs potential exactly. But they are all in general, they just got this type of formula, basic similar to what we have. There's a minimum, uh, the lightest uh, resonance mass divided by F times mt. So, uh, so this uh, again, this just says for Higgs mass to be 125 GV, you need one relative light top partner with mass close to the symmetry breaking scale. 
So this is some uh, figure taken from Pomona and River. They show that for F to be 500 GeV, to get the correct Higgs boson mass, in general for these models, these are the two, two different types of uh, heavy resonance. There's always one of them to be very light, around 500 GeV to similar uh, mass to the F square. Now notice this is uh, quite different from, for example, QCD. In QCD, the lattice composite the fermion, like barium, is proton, which has mass of like uh, more than 900 MeV, which is much bigger than F pi. So this requires some, some special arrangement, that is the composite operator need to have a scaling dimension very close to 3 half. That is, this, is, this composite fermion it almost becomes free and decoupled from the strong dynamics. So uh, this is uh, some part of unusual, unusual uh, requirement. But uh, anyway, in order, this is, would be the implication of this 125 CV Higgs boson for this type of model. Now let me uh, discuss a different uh, type of models uh, based on the top seesaw mechanism. Now the top seesaw mechanism is, uh, is an extension to the top condensate, uh, top condensation in order to obtain the top torque mass. Here I just uh, have uh, I'll just have a very uh, quick uh, uh, review of top condensation. The top condensation is basically you assume that uh, there are some new strong non-combining force between the left-handed top and bottom number and the right-handed top. Because there are strong force between them, they can form a bound state, which is identified, uh, is identified as the Higgs boson. Now, at the high energy scale, the Higgs is, does not exist, but at the low energy, the Higgs becomes an effective degree of freedom. And then now they can generate the mass term, the Yukawa couplings, and the quartic term. Uh, they can be uh, there are all these problems can be calculated in a linear energy approximation like this. And uh, basically one finds that if the coupling, the new strong force is strong enough that uh, the mass square of this bound state becomes negative, then this bound state can get a web which breaks the uh, Carroll symmetry. Uh, in this model, the Yukawa coupling and scalar quality coupling are basically uh, you can uh, are governed by the strong dynamics, so there's not much freedom uh, 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 that you can change. But uh, because of strong dynamics, we cannot check it exactly, but they can be estimated in the leading NC approximation. The Yuka coupling is, is about 3 to 4 if the composite scale and the uh, symmetry breaking scale are not, very, are not uh, far away from each other, so that there's no tuning. And the quartic coupling, and the scalar quartic coupling is about twice of the Yukawa current square in the fermion loop approximation, leading NC approximation. This implies in top condensation model, the prediction for, the, they have a strong prediction. The prediction is top quark is 600 GeV, and the Higgs boson mass is twice of the top quark mass. You can see both the prediction are wrong uh, compared with the experiment. So in order to fix it, uh, one introduced some, some new vector-like quark. Chi L and Chi R, they are singular, so they have the same gauge quantum number as the right hand top. Now you assume that they also have this new strong force. So new strong force is assumed between these new left, uh, all three left-handed quark and the uh, two right-handed quark. So there, they, uh, it preserves a U3 uh, L carrier symmetry between T L C L and Chi L instead of just T L C L and just U2. Now when they form a condensate, this is condensate breaks U3 down to U2, which produces a, a, a double, at least a double, which can be uh, identified as Higgs. This is a pseudo non Google boson. Now, the difference is that the explicit break, signature breaking term, which generates Higgs potential, comes from the vector like fermion mass term. Instead of, like in the previous model, it comes from the coupling between the, the standard. Uh, Elementary standard model field and the strong dynamics. Here, all the all of them are participated in the uh, in the strong dynamics. But uh, you have this vector-like quark, so they can have a mass term which breaks this uh, global symmetry. This is in some sense very uh, more similar to the QCD case. That the higher mass are induced due uh, mostly due to the up and down quark mass. 
Now I can write down a low energy effective theory uh, involving all these scalars and uh, their coupling to the fermions, like your car coupling. Now we have a three left-handed quark and right, two right-handed quark, so they you can form six scalars, which you can write as two triplets. Uh, in particular, there are, uh, in terms of standard model SU2, there are two doublets and the two singers. Okay. Now this tuple term comes from the vector-like fermion mass term, which we just uh, said earlier. Now this uh, fermion mass term translates into the tuple term of scalar. You can see that it completely form a scalar. Now these are the main explicit U3 breaking effect from, from this tuple term. Now, the assumption is that uh, for these two triplets, only one of them uh, get a negative mass square. Therefore, th they get a vacuum expectation value to break the electrical uh, weak symmetry, to break the carrier symmetry. It's, uh, it's this, this column, H chi and the phi chi together. It's, it's the spontaneous U3 breaking. However, the other triplet also get a valve in a singular direction. The reason why it gets a valve is because it has a tuple term. So it also gets induced a, a, a small valve, like this. Uh, we call it the U, U sine gamma and U cosine gamma. And one can minimize the potential and find all this value. You find that this is the, the vacuum structure you find. The heat, the, the valve, the, the electrically breaking web is all in the H chi sector, not in HC. If we choose the basis for C chi chi is zero, we only have C chi T that has type of term. Now once we have this web, we can write down the fermion mass term. Uh, it has, it's a two by two matrix. The top four has a two by two matrix. In particular, this entry, the C is about three to four times V. This entry would be like 600 GeV, as we discussed before. It will, if, we, if only the, is this term, the top fork mass, too heavy. However, we have these two addi new additional terms here. So you can see that this mass matrix form a seesaw type, type term. Through this mixing, you can get the light eigenvalue by choosing a perfect mixing angle here. If the choose the mixing angle is about a quarter to a fifth, you can produce a, uh, the correct top fork mass. Now there will be another heavy eigenstate, the T prime mass, which is about two times, uh, two point five times the F. It's quite heavy. Now for the scalar mass, uh, for the Higgs boson mass, in fact here we have four CP even scalars, two from the double, two from the single. It takes this uh, big mixing matrix, but uh, one can just find the Lightest eigenstate come, uh, come from uh, mostly H chi. You, you calculate the lightest eigenvalue, it takes this particular form. It's also related to the top, you call coupling, and the web. This factor is always smaller than one. Then there's this factor, which in fact is the uh, quartic coupling divided by two times the you call coupling square. In the fermion loop approximation, this factor is just one. So this means that the Higgs boson mass is very close, in fact, related to the top quark mass. And re the reason why it has this form is that when you take the C to in infinity or top quark mass to zero limit, it's the limit where no explicit U3 breaking. So the Higgs boson becomes an exact sample boson boson. We can see that we say that this term is purely due to the tuple term, which is the, the explicit symmetry breaking term. So if this term is zero, you see that there's a massless eigenstate. The top will go to zero. Also, in this limit, when there's no explicit breaking term, the Higgs boson will also become exactly massless. So they are strongly related. Now, the Higgs bo boson mass uh, mostly re uh, depends on this factor, this factor, this factor. In addition, there's also an electrical gauge loop contribution, which always uh, always reduce the Higgs boson mass. And the one finds that uh, there is an upper bound of Higgs boson mass, about 180 GeV, and so on, just by this rough estimate. And the one can also calculate it more precisely, it depends on these three parameters. We, we plot two of them on the uh, vertical and the horizontal axis and choose a, different, a few different uh, M row. is the cutoff of the electrical gauge uh, loop. Then we find that uh, 
the Higgs boson mass is usually uh, is generically lies within this range, and 1.5 GeV is uh, Higgs, uh, 1.5 GeV Higgs, uh, 1.5 GeV is uh, comparable in the middle of this possible parameter region. So in this model, in fact, this uh, the Higgs boson mass has not not much to do with the top partner mass. In fact, it's just uh, related to to this uh, scale. It's just related to mostly to the top few power companies. Now the drawback of this model is that uh, it doesn't contain a custodial SU2 symmetry as we discussed earlier because it's based on U3 model U2. So that uh, the key parameter constraint requires the symmetry breaking scale to be bigger than about 3.5 GeV, which means a substantial fine tuning is required to get the correct symmetry breaking. Even though it's once you tune it, the Higgs boson mass doesn't depend on F. And uh, must uh, um, the top uh, F anymore. Now, if we want to reduce the the fine tuning, we have to enlarge this model. This is possible if we can extend this model to to include some custodial SU two symmetry in this model, uh, so that uh, T B left transform like a two two under this S S O five. Now, this can be done by you add. It, by adding two additional uh, quarks, x and t, vector-like quarks, so that you can extend, adding two of the additional one, you have these five left-handed uh, fermions. They have a U5 symmetry, which contains the O5 group, which we can use to come, uh, to have this custodial SU2 symmetry. And you're adding these two new doublets, you also need to write down their some fermion mass term. One finds that uh, uh, we need uh, this mu q to be small enough in order to satisfy the t parameter constraint. Because if this is too big, then you can just integrate out this, this factor and then you recover the minimal model, then it's not effective. So this implies that you will have these two new fermions need to be quite light in order for the uh, symmetry breaking scale to be low and, uh, and uh, 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 for a more natural model. Now uh, this uh, shows that uh, indeed one can get a very uh, small f about one TeV by choosing mx to be a little bit smaller than one TeV and one twenty six TeV you can get get in the middle of this region. Now the current bound uh, on this new fermion is about eight hundred TeV at the RHC. Uh, so at the next round, it will certainly this uh, uh, we will extend this search uh, further. Okay, these are just a couple models uh, for a uh, 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 couple composite Higgs model. We just discussed the, the, this new Higgs boson, the, this uh, newly discovered Higgs boson, the implication on these models. One finds that uh, the, the light Higgs boson of 125 GeV can be obtained in, in composite Higgs model if the Higgs boson is a pseudo Nambu Gosen boson of some. Uh, which comes from some strong dynamics, uh, preserving some larger global symmetry. Now, this Higgs boson is, uh, mass is closely related to the top quark mass, and uh, because it provides the largest uh, exclusive breaking term. Now, in, in many models, one finds that uh, such a Higgs boson mass will require some fermionic top partners with mass very close to the symmetry breaking scale. So, at the next uh, RHC run into a significant extent their search reach and the probe the most natural parameter space of these models. On the other hand, uh, what about the other uh, possible uh, signature? One thing is that in composite Higgs model, the Higgs coupling to standard model field receives corrections of all their V square over F square. So if uh, the F is low enough, like the one TV, one Expect about five percent correction to the to this Higgs coupling. Then they, this uh, correction can be tested at the future uh, Higgs factory. However, in order to test uh, complete test the composite Higgs idea and to distinguish between different models, we we would like to access uh, all these composite states and the resonance uh, as energies. This partly will be beyond the reach of the RHC but uh, will require a new higher energy machine, like a 100 TV machine, uh, beyond the RHC. 
in order to, to, to test, uh, to retest these, these models. Okay, I think that's all I want to say. Thanks for the attention. Any questions, comments? not just between these two models. Even within uh, uh, one class, there are different fermion assignments. In fact, a lot, a lot of them have a similar structure, at least for Higgs coupling. There's a, you know, at least coupled to the WWZZ, it's basic question is it's cosine V over F because of the scope zone photon structure, which is independent of any model. It's only just because it's a scope zone photon, it has this correction. Now for fermions, it may depend on the representation of the group of what the correction is. But, the, uh, but the we, we won't have many measurements, right? We, we can measure Higgs to top, Higgs to WWZZ, and uh, it just will have two numbers. It's hard to really distinguish all different models. Just like we, if we only have pions, so it's very difficult to figure out the whole QCD. Any other question? Yes. Certainly, you, you again you, you need to be able to produce a huge amount of tops to in order to measure that uh, that coupling, right? Yeah. Uh, other questions? Well, if not, then thanks, Shinja, again.